Namaste. Uh, we are in Nepal, so I, I'd like to greet you first. Namaste. This is so special. In 23 years, we are coming. The World Social Forum has come to Nepal and Kathmandu, and I just want to recognize the NGO Federation Nepal for having done that for all of us. Thank you very much. And next, I would like to really thank the Global University for Sustainability for inviting me here, primarily through my friend Lai, whom I met some 11 years back in Nepal. <laughs> yes, Lai, in yeah. Tewa. So, um, I'm, I'm delighted to reconnect. All these connections are so precious. So uh, in 11 years, we could meet because I could come to this forum. I also take a moment to thank friends from Nagrikavas who are present here and trying to look after us a little bit. Thank you very much. My esteemed and very uh, professional, academically professional colleagues who went before me have really given a framework for why we are where we are now. So I have, I can bring for you a very activist perspective because a hands-on perspective, what it means for women and peace under climate change. And I'd like to do that. So if somebody can, uh, Marina, can you give me a show of hand in nine minutes? Because I'm sure I have already finished and I'll wind up. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I will bring to your notice, for those of you who are not familiar in, with Nepal, three main incidences yeah, that have happened in recent years. One is, of course, the April 2015 earthquake, which was very devastating, very big. And then in June 2021, we had the Melamchi floods, very different. I mean, the floods were more a avalanche of slurry that came down to the waters, very devastating. And then so quickly in 2023, November, we had earthquakes in four districts of far western Nepal, which are mountainous. And because of the height, very cold November. Also, there's a lot of seasonal migration there and very isolated communities live there. So you can imagine they're still I mean, this winter, more from the death of the earthquake, the death from freezing cold, uh, lack of uh, warmth, uh, colds, all these things have happened. And so, in terms of ongoing, increasing floods, landslides, forest fires, those, as we know, are all exacerbated in all our countries. There's no exception. Almost like the time when we had the 10 year long armed conflict, we know that with climate change, well, anything that happens with climate change is also the most vulnerable are at the highest risk. And this no doubt is the 51% women, but even women, that intersectionality, uh, that it hits some women much more than it does others, but uh, the elderly, the, I mean, I won't go into that, disability, sexual minorities, they all suffer because they are on the fringes of our society. How come we don't proactively, and what's made me think all these years, I mean, Nagrikavas, I began in 2001, so since then, even more, I have been thinking about how come we don't work proactively to minimize these risks. Because when I was working for uh, peace building in establishing Nagrikavas, I would always think about how come we are 
putting so much into track one negotiations, track two negotiations, but we are not worried about the community, the women who sustain the communities as more men than women go to war, the children, the women, they sustain our homes. And because of that, women are particularly, their agency is most important and providing some support. Recording in progress. Providing some support at the community level is extremely important. And um, it, it still remains a mystery to me how planners and how developers don't think of this. So some lessons uh, and practices I have myself used and enabled others to use is relief for immediate is good. We all do that. But long-term recovery is even more important. And relief needs to have inbuilt love and care. It's not about just throwing a packet of dry fruits, foods in somebody's home. It's about actually enabling us to really work with them. And um, in this, for me, I think the community safety nets is a concept that I brought in where we want to enable disaster-related community safety nets that go on for long term, that self-organize and self-propel. Because when we shift to different locations in these situations, we miss our traditional safety nets of family and friends or neighbors. So I just ask yeah. to myself, I mean, how can uh, this be possible in a fragmented community? Uh, our experience shows that drugs, trafficking, increasing rates of suicides have happened everywhere where people survive earthquakes. They survive the earthquakes, but they are frozen to death. So finally, I don't know if somebody is watching my time, but the bottom line I would like to say is climate change has the biggest impact on women. Women are central to peace building. You see the correlation because they sustain families at the level of the communities. It is imperative that we focus on women and support them better. Their safety net is therefore utmost important. But as Anita mentioned, Greta, Greta Thunberg, no doubt, for me, I feel we have to begin with ourselves, from I, from me. And I try to do that as much as I can. And I think without that, it is just talk and numbers. And I think the more we can be with ourselves and bring ourselves to be a part of making that change for the better, things will not improve. So thank you. Thank you very much.